Hi folks, this is a video on the mechanics of monetary policy and it's a, a, I guess a very concrete example of how the uh, United States Federal Reserve and the banking system actually creates new money. Now you're going to be needing this chart in order to complete the handout that I have prepared for you on, on the mechanics of monetary policy and it's probably the single most hand, difficult handout that, that we have to work on throughout the course. Um, so we'll, we'll take this, take you through this step by step. Um, hopefully it won't be tremendously difficult, but uh, you do need to sort of pay attention and, and uh, really try to, to focus on this. So uh, the first case here is that we're using a T-sheet and a set of T-accounts to examine three tiers of the U.S. financial system. The top tier here that my cursor is moving on is at the U.S. Federal Reserve level. The second tier that my cursor is moving over is the, the banking level, the banks that, that you and I would, would conduct our business in. And then the third tier here would, would be us, the banking customers. Because we're looking at a T-sheet, the left-hand side of our T or our balance sheet has to equal the right-hand side. And that's something to keep in mind as we work our way through the first example of how the uh, U.S. Federal Reserve could uh, increase the money supply. But for right now, let's just go through and, and take a look at, at the various components um, of our of our T-sheets. Uh, let's take a look at the Federal Reserve level first. We'll look at the Fed's assets here. And we see the, the number 83 associated with Treasury Securities. These are um, financial instruments that the Fed could actually sell to us, banking customers, uh, at, if we are interested in, uh, I guess, kind of um, buying uh, a stock or a bond in in the United States government, which would uh, we would purchase immediately, and the Federal Reserve would, would get cash in exchange for that. We would hold on to this uh, Treasury security until uh, for a specified period of time, and then the Federal Reserve would pay us back for that after a specified time, plus interest. So for us, purchasing a, a Treasury security is a good, safe investment to make. It's a good way to make our money grow. And uh, for the Fed, they, they get um, to have immediate access uh, to our money, which then can increase the money supply. So if you're wondering what a Treasury security is, it's, it's kind of what I just outlined there. It's in, in, a set, in essence, it's a, a stock uh, in the government, I guess, uh, that a bank customer, you and I, uh, could, could purchase for the means of um, uh, personal investment and increasing our wealth. So that's what that is. Well, what that means, though, is, is that... Um, um, over here in terms of these assets that could be sold by the Fed, they're hanging on to this 83 uh, in Treasury Securities. I just wanted to get to to, uh, to reinforce that idea. These are things, this is the amount of money that the Fed, or the amount of securities that the Fed could sell to people. Right now they're just holding that sort of in reserve, if you will. Over here in terms of uh, liabilities, it looks like uh, client banks have $26 of of uh, vault cash held in reserve at the Federal Reserve, and that's one of the things, remember, that banks have to, by Federal Reserve policy, hold a certain amount of their loanable capital in reserve with the Fed. So that's what that 26 is. And then um, it looks like the, the Fed is also due to pay out $57 of Federal Reserve notes, which is just kind of a fancy word for the uh, the fiat money that that, um, that, that you and I use. Um, so uh, the 26 and the 57 are going to add up to 83, which is the amount of money that the Fed has in, in its assets. So the Fed is in balance here at our baseline case before we start to figure out in our next graph how the Fed increased the money supply. I just want to help you to the fact that the Fed right now is in balance. Let's take a look at our second tier now, the, the, the banks that, uh, that you and I conduct our business with. We know, based on our examination of the Fed, that banks here have $26 in reserve. That we're going to count as an asset. 
Um, we also note, again, at, at just sort of this initial level, that the banks themselves are holding um, $4 in reserve notes as, as assets. And then the banks here have an additional $405 of um, loans, which, um, uh, which they've given out. And again, that is counted as an asset for the bank. But of course, down here, that those loans have to be paid back to the bank, so that is counted as a liability for you and me, the people that have taken out these loans here. On the other side of the, the bank's T-sheet, we have the bank's liabilities, and uh, it looks like you and I have $300 of checking accounts with the banks. That's where that comes from, so it's a a number that the bank would have to pay out at some specified point in time whenever we go in to ask the bank for money or we use our um, ATM cards to take uh, money out of the banks. And uh, it looks like the, um, the banks also owe their stockholders, the, the, the people that have bought uh, part shares in the bank, it looks like they, they owe those stockholders 135 And again, if we, if we do our addition here, we see in t that the bank has $435 of liabilities, which is balanced out with their $435 of assets. Um, so the bank should be in balance here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at us, the bank customers. We already know that, that we have uh, $300 uh, in our collective checking accounts here. We, c we count that as an asset. Um, it looks like we're holding on to some cash uh, just sort of on our persons um, in, in the tune of $53. And it looks like we, at a previous point in time, previous to, um, to, to this graph, it looks like we've already purchased some Treasury securities from, from the Federal Reserve, and we have $52 of those. And uh, again, in terms of our liabilities, we've already maintained that we've taken out uh, $405 in loans. Of course, that has to be paid back for you and I, and, um, and uh, so that shows up then as a liability. Now, uh, it looks like we're in balance here in terms of, of having $405 of liabilities uh, contrasted with our $405 of assets. Uh, before we go any further, let's just uh, pause and stop and take a look at the money supply now. Uh, the money supply is valued at this point in time in our baseline case at $353. We get the $300 in, that are, is in our checking account and the $53 that is actually on, on our purses and our wallets um, and that we have uh, ready for immediate expenditure. We don't count the 52 in Treasury securities as a part of the money supply, at least this part of the money supply, because it is not easily transferable into cash and can't easily be spent. Um, because of that, it doesn't contribute sort of to the money supply because it's not, not treated as, 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 uh, as money. It can't be uh, easily exchanged for goods and services. So I'm going to pause here and let you sort of digest that, and then we're going to get down to uh, analyzing the next graph. OK, we're back. Um, here we're going to take a look at um, the Fed practicing something called open market operations or OMO and it is the easiest quickest way that the US Federal Reserve can increase or decrease the money supply. We're going to take a look at and how it does that. Um, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to, to just take your mind back to the fact that, that the, our, uh, we, the bank customers, had been holding on to $52 of Treasury securities in our previous graph. And the very first thing if, uh, that we want to do if, at the Fed, if we want to increase the money supply, say we're in a recession or whatever, is the Fed is going to buy back some of those Treasury securities from us, the bank customers. And in this particular case, we have uh, sold off $10 of those Treasury securities uh, that, that we had been holding on to for the purposes of investment. That can happen easily. And so this minus 10 for us, the liabilities, uh, now has turned into plus 10 over here. We've um, increased the Fed, Fed's assets of Treasury securities by the tune of 10. This number had been 83 before, and now it is 93. 
What that means is that immediately that $10 goes into uh, bank reserve uh, accounts that's head, headed by the Fed. And so that this number had been 26 poor, now it's 36. Well, this is kind of interesting because if we're assuming a 10% reserve ratio, which we are in this particular case, and we've increased the bank's reserves by 10, what that means then is the banks then will hold on to this $10, right? But it means that they can loan out an additional $90 um, given the reserve ratio. If we increase the bank's reserves here, it increases the, the bank's uh, ability to loan out an additional amount of money. And so based on this $10 of Treasury securities that the, tre that the Fed has purchased, it's enabled the banks to increase their reserve accounts here by 10, and it's mean meant that the banks then can increase the amount, their amount of loanable capital by $90 in this particular case. So this number here had, had uh, been 405, and it's now increased to 495. It means here that in terms of, uh, of um, uh, the loans out to us, that number again corresponds 495 of loans that the banks have given out as assets are $495 of now liabilities that we've, we've taken out in loans. Okay, so now the only thing that we have to figure out is where did this $400 come from, um, this uh, increase of $100 in the previous graph, this number was only 300 this number was only 300 so where did this additional $100 come from uh, for bank customers? How did we increase our bank accounts by 100? Well, the first 10 actually came from our sale of Treasury securities to the Fed. Remember, the Fed got the securities themselves, and in exchange for that, we got $10. So this number then would have, have bumped up from 300 to 310. Great. So now where did the other 90 come from? Well, the other 90 comes from over here. And, and this, remember that um, when we take out loans, we then go and spend that money on goods and services, but then that money in turn, remember, becomes somebody else's income. So this additional 90 uh, from 310 to now 400 comes from this $90 in loan, and it's because the money that we're, we're spending ultimately come, becomes somebody else's income, and then they go deposit that money in their bank. So the 400 then... Uh, well, the, the 310 turns into 400 after the 90 in loans. That becomes a, a $400 asset for us, but then a $400 liability uh, for the banks. And we see then that everything now is, is back in a state of equilibrium, and the money supply has actually increased from 353, where it was previously, to 453. That's $400 in checkable deposits, plus, again, the $53 that we uh, had in cash beforehand, we just held that constant. So a $10 sale of securities on our part to the Federal Reserve has actually then increased the money supply by 100. So when the Federal Reserve decides that it wants to increase the money supply, it purchases Treasury securities from us, the public. Opposite is true when it wants to contract the money supply, slow the economy down a little bit. Uh, what it would do then, instead of purchasing Treasury securities from us, it would sell securities, and that's actually what the next, next example asks you to do. So, I uh, hope that makes sense. It's relatively clear, and uh, good luck completing the next assignment.